Hey, what's up guys? So you know I've made a lot of videos on IoT and getting stuff connected to the internet so you can monitor these devices or control these devices from anywhere in the world. And uh, I've been using these devices I've created for a long time here in my house. And you know what? It seems like really the only thing I ever care about with these devices is when something happens here in the house when I'm not home, I want to get that instant notification on my smartphone. So this was really the inspiration for a new project I'll be talking about called the Pusher Board. And it's called the Pusher Board because it does nothing but send push notification on an event to your smartphone. So I've got the board mounted up here to my door. I actually have these boards on all of my doors. And we'll talk about the hardware in a second here. But if I, I'm just gonna go ahead and lock my phone there. And as soon as I open the door here, I'll shut it there. And within five seconds or so, we get the instant notification on the smartphone. So there you go, right there. And uh, this is very powerful. So I'll get that notification from anywhere in the world. The board is sleeping right now at less than one microamp and it does nothing. It just monitors that one input. So as soon as it's triggered, wakes up, sends that notification to the phone. And of course it's using the low cost ESP8266 Wi-Fi module. So we'll talk about the programming there, the hardware that is used to monitor that input as well as setting up the push notification service. So we don't need to create a custom app or anything like that. We're using a service called Push Bullet. So we'll set that up and then in future videos we'll talk about getting notifications on a Slack channel. Uh, maybe you don't care about any of that and you just want a text message. So we'll do uh, a text message version as well. As well, and, and we'll get into some other modifications like maybe adding a camera to it or hooking it up to different things like this is with uh, using door sensors, but what about monitoring the doorbell or flood sensors in the basement uh, or motion or whatever you want. Really, it's pretty simple. Just as soon as it sees that triggered event, send the push notification. And really, I think this is the most powerful part of IoT, really, for me at least. That's all I really ever care about is when something happens, let me know right away. That's it. So let's go ahead and take a quick look at the hardware. Okay, so just before we dive into everything, I just wanted to give you a quick warning. Uh, this I've been working on this for a long time, so I'm going to be all over the place in this video talking about a lot of different things, but in the future, hopefully, the videos I make for this project will be focused on whatever function I'm adding to the, the project. So uh, anyway, just keep that in mind. Uh, I'm probably going to uh, mumble on and on and on about whatever. So, uh, But real quick, I just wanted to show you something. Uh, with the Push Bullet app here, if you go in, it keeps a log of all of your notifications and of course you know I I'm showing you front door sensor that's the notification but I can also send a custom message so door sensor triggered battery equals 4.3 volts so that's kinda nice and I've got front door garage door back door you know all the doors in my house here are being monitored and it's not just from my smartphone uh, push bullet has an extension for browsers so if you're using Google Chrome you'll see the little notification pop up there as well let me get that back in focus. There we go. So everything for this board is designed onto a custom board like this, which I actually handed the bare board out to the patrons of this channel. So if you're interested in that, take a look in the description below. Uh, it's all open source. I've got a wiki over here I created for and a whole bunch of little videos talking about different things. I've got the schematic up there, some of the reworks and changes needed to get it to work. Uh, how to put it together, and so on. I'm actually on version two at this point right now. The board also does a couple other cool things. So it, it doesn't just sleep at sub one microamp forever until it's triggered. It will wake up once an hour, check that battery voltage, and if it's fine, it goes back to sleep. Uh, if it's low, it will send you that notification saying, hey, the battery's low. So if you've got the application where it's monitoring a flood sensor or a smoke detector or something like that that just never goes off, at least you're doing the battery voltage monitoring. And uh, you might be thinking, well, you know, there's, what's the big deal of monitoring a digital input? You know, I can do that pretty easily with a pull-up resistor or something like that. Well, the trick comes in when you're dealing with normally closed type contacts like door sensors. Like right now, this is a closed contact. Okay, the, we have a connection between these two wires. So if you fed that into a microcontroller, um, 
and let's say that contact was like right here and you had a pull up and you just pulled it to ground well right now it would be closed and you'd have that constant current draw from that pull up resistor and that's what I wanted to get away from in fact even going to a 1 meg you still have that sleep current uh, so again getting away from that completely I wanted sub 1 microamp sleep current so the battery basically lasts forever I mean depends on how often it's it's it you wake it up but even with a normally open type contact like something where there's a couple ways you could do that but let's just drop a quick picture here so VBAT like that and then that feeds into your microcontroller kind of drawing this at an angle uh, you know, I could do pull down or pull up doesn't matter but let's just say that's a pull down resistor and right now that would pull no current at all when it's, it's sleeping and that's that's fine but the other thing that the problem here with this is if you were to open the door and leave it open okay if it was that style of contact uh, then this would be closed continuously draining through that resistor so I wanted to get away from that and this circuit here is what I came up with and it's a pulse based circuit so instead of waking up on a close and then it's held closed like that and it's feeding that pin high or low I wanted it to just send a pulse and wake it up uh, with a normally open contact the other thing you could do is have that actually control the power to your processor so when that contact closes it actually gets its power through that contact you know, something like that. I, I did a video a while back on a uh, latch circuit. So, like, it latches. So even if it was just, you know, closed briefly, at least it can wake up, do its thing, and then unlatch itself to kill power. You could do that, too. That's possible. The problem with that, though, is uh, if you wanted that timer wake up, you know, you'd have to kind of roll that in parallel with that. So, anyway, I, I weighed all of the different uh, concepts here and came up with this one and this is again based on a pulse type circuit and your contact is right over here okay so it's continuously giving VBAT to this point right here I've got a diode that just blocks anything from the outside world so anything from this circuit can't get to the outside world when it's closed or or open or whatever uh, and then right here we have a supervisor chip okay and this is used uh, on boards to monitor voltage rails so if they fall below a certain value go ahead and trip or reset hold all the processors in reset for like brownout control and stuff like that so I'm using a supervisor chip here to just monitor this voltage right there so when VBAT goes away when this contact opens up it loses the voltage here and this supervisor chip is a push-pull type meaning when there is voltage there this pin is high it's driving that pin high when this voltage goes away it drives this pin low and my hope originally was that it would continue to hold that pin low and drive it low even when the voltage is completely gone but it actually doesn't quite do that because it gets its power from this pin as well so it can't really hold low it holds low uh, it, and then it doesn't fully try state it kind of gets into a weird no man's land but that's fine so I had to modify the circuit up a little bit to uh, to basically allow it to pulse through a 10 microfarad capacitor so anyway when you have voltage here um, let me I'm gonna skip ahead a little bit the power to the board comes through this LDO I'll come back to this in a second but the power to the board comes through this LDO here so I've got a 4.2 volt lithium battery feeding the board at at this point here and I've got this LDO which is down here now the LDO is enabled through this timer chip this is the TPL 5111 and I think if you throw that into Google you can find uh, little breakout boards and and you know whatever that just have that part on the board so you can kinda get everything you see here working on the bench and this is what controls the wake up every one hour right and that wake up is controlled with an external resistor that I've got down here by the way check the schematic this is just the show ba the, the basic functionality of this board so that pull down resistor here you set it for whatever you want I think I've got it set for one hour which is 124k ohm uh, value down here 
And also, if you ever pull this point high to VBAT, the battery voltage coming in, uh, it will wake the timer up, and, and when it wakes up, it pulls this pin, enable pin, uh, high, which enables the LDO, okay? And uh, that's sort of how it works. I'm going to jump over to the schematic real quick here so you can see the actual uh, pin. So uh, I'm showing it at a high level over here, but if you look at the schematic, I'll just zoom in a little bit there. There we go. So here is the TPL5111, and, and it controls this LDO through the enable pin of the drive pin output here. Okay, so it, it enables that 3.3 volts through the LDO regulator, and then as soon as the ESP8266 is done doing whatever it needs to do, it drives the done pin high, and that comes from over here on the ESP8266. Okay, so it's pretty straightforward. Uh, and I've got a little reset button on the board too, so if you wanted to, that basically just pulls that pin high. This MOSFET that you see here forces a wake up of the timer. Okay, so it drives that pin high, forces a wake up. So that's what I was just getting at is that you have your normal timer wake up every one hour, and then you've got your external triggered wake up coming from the normally close contact out here. And it does that. So now we're back to this point here. It does that through the MOSFET. Uh, this is a P-channel MOSFET. So what happens here is we lose this voltage here. This output sees that voltage go away, and then it starts pulling low. And as soon as it pulls low, it was high. So the voltage at these two points was the same at VBAT, essentially. Uh, we then pull low, and as soon as we pull low, this capacitor here shorts down through the supervisor chip pulling this pin here low briefly. And when it pulls it low, we then enable the P-channel MOSFET, pulling this pin here high, waking up the timer IC. And as soon as the timer IC wakes up, bam, it enables the LDO. We get 3.3, the ESP 8266 boots up. It then goes and checks this pin here, which when that went low, okay, right here, this is then just high. So it knows that uh, it knows that it was uh, an external wake up. Okay, if this was sitting high when this woke up, this would be on pulling this pin low. Okay, so it checks that, and if it was low, it knows it was a timer wake up. So that's like the whole point of this thing. We want to know whether a timer woke us up or the external trigger, and it does that monitoring this pin here, this line here, and that's in the schematic over here as well. Whew. Okay, so that's kind of how that whole thing works. So here's the external wake input, and then here's the VBAT P channel, uh, which I actually, this schematic's got some errors in it. Um, I've got the P channel in backwards, rookie mistake, um, and uh, all of those reworks are documented in this uh, wiki. And you'll see a V2 schematic published very shortly, which has some additional features. It can not only monitor normally closed input, but can also monitor normally open closed con or normally open, whatever. It's the opposite. It can monitor both normally closed or normally open. So you can, you know, if a flood sensor closes when it's triggered, you can monitor that with this. And it's a sleep current both when the contact is closed or open. So it's kind of cool the way that whole thing works. Okay, so I think that kind of breaks down the hardware. That's that's really, I think, the uh, the most novel thing about this circuit. It also has uh, a pretty cool little circuit over here to do monitor the battery voltage. It's just an NPN-PNP pair. So when it wakes up, it can enable the battery uh, voltage to this voltage divider here for the ESP8266, and it's a divide by 4.5 because this can only handle a one volt input on the analog to digital uh, pin here, the ADC pin. So, uh, and you again, this voltage divider, if you had this hanging out there on VBAT, that would be a constant drain on your battery through these divider resistors. So this basically, when that pin goes high, the NPN turns on, giving that base current down through the PNP 
to turn this on. And there's also an error in there as well. This R13 is supposed to be right there. And then I've got a little pull up over here to, uh, to get that to completely turn off that PNP. And uh, I I'll, I've got a video on that right here. Battery voltage measurement circuit change. And that kind of goes through that. Okay, so I'm all over the place. But that covers sort of the hardware of the pusher board. Let's jump into the code now for push bullet. Okay, so we'll just walk through this uh, Arduino code quickly here. Um, and it's still, this, this code is still a work in progress. It's just sample test code at this point. Um, but uh, it's pretty straightforward. There's not a whole lot going on here. I've got a whole bunch of includes here. Early on when I was doing some testing with this, I was trying all different sort of uh, uh, libraries and different examples and uh, the includes started piling up over here. So I do need to go back through and clean this up. But uh, for now, this code does work. Uh, again, we're using uh, PushBullet for this whole thing. So if you go to pushbullet.com, uh, you're going to want to sign up for an account, get PushBullet installed on all your devices. Like I said, you can also get uh, the extension for Google Chrome, which is cool. Right now, it seems like everything is free that I'm doing. Uh, I would gladly pay for this a couple bucks a month or whatever it is because it is just, I mean, this is all I ever really wanted out of I IoT. So, um, and the fact that it's monitoring everything in my house and I'm going to keep adding these boards in um, if I ever do hit some sort of API push notification limit or whatever, you know, I would pay a couple bucks. Hopefully it's, it's uh, not too bad. But uh, once you sign up for this, uh, go into settings and then go into your account and then you want to copy the token out of there. Uh, I'm just gonna check that real quick. So just so I don't have to blur anything out, here we go, you go to account, settings account, and then you wanna go to your access tokens and then you're gonna create this uh, uh, token here and you wanna copy that and paste it right here in the sample code, okay? And that's all you really need to do to get set up with this thing. Um, okay, so a lot of this code, by the way, I found at this website here. So this uh, Steve guy put together a really cool push bullet example, and uh, some of that code I copied over into this and also I leveraged some help from my friend Richard Johnson and he wrote this entire function that sends the custom message to PushBullet and uh, you can check out his YouTube channel here. Okay, so let's just walk through this a little bit here. Um, <clears throat> here's all of the stuff you set up for PushBullet to use their API. We've got some of the pins declared in here um, and some other miscellaneous things that we're using to convert the float variable into, uh, into a, a character array to kind of put it into the message. So, uh, yeah, and that's down here. We're keeping track of the external wake. That's like the most important thing. So when you see in the void setup here, I'm going to skip around a little bit here. But the first thing we do is check that input pin, that one pin that I was talking about earlier, this pin right here, external wake. So we check that pin immediately because we need to know right away. And it's a pulse we're getting in, so that's gonna go away. So again, if that pin is high, that, that, that means that that pin, the input to the MOSFET is low. And so we know that it was an external wake, true. Otherwise, it's gonna be false coming in and we know it's just a standard timer wake. <clears throat> Okay, so as soon as we're done checking that and setting that flag, we can go in and take a battery voltage measurement. Okay, so we're doing that on analog pin zero, analog read on A0. We have to enable the battery voltage measurement circuit, so we drive that pin high. Got a little bit of a settling time in there. Could probably, uh, I could probably lower that down to even a single millisecond. Um, and then, um, we drive the LED high, it's uh, active low, so we drive that LED pin low and we keep it low the whole time. In fact, I don't even turn it off because we're killing power to the entire board with that LDO. 
So as soon as that done pin goes high, it will kill power. So we don't have to turn the LED off. It will lose power. Okay, speaking of the done pin, we make that an output. And then we print out some debug information here. So if it was an external wake, uh, let us know through the serial monitor. If it wasn't, it was a timer wake. And if the battery voltage is good, just go back to sleep. So that's what I'm doing here, driving that done pin high. Uh, and then letting us know what the battery voltage is right there. Then the next thing I'm using is the Wi-Fi manager. So if you haven't used this before, uh, if we go down to, uh, let's go, I wanna show you the Wi-Fi manager. I'll just throw this, go into the library manager, search Wi-Fi, and let's see, where is it at? I think I'm gonna have to, there we go. So go and download and install the Wi-Fi manager library because this is how you provision the Wi-Fi module to your Wi-Fi access point in your house. So this is uh, setting up a timeout so that, you know, if I, if I can't get connection when this wakes up, let's say the power's out or the Wi-Fi, something's going on with the Wi-Fi, uh, if I can't get it, kill it in two minutes. Just cancel on the whole thing and uh, it will eventually kill power to it in the void loop. I may actually need to clean this up a little bit. So if I do detect a, a, a timeout issue, don't go any further, just kill the power immediately. Uh, but anyway, that's how it sets it up, the two minute uh, timeout. So we're not just sitting there all day long, hey, I can't get Wi-Fi. Um, and what that does, by the way, I'm gonna wake up my board I've got here that I haven't provisioned yet. Just give me a second here. I'm gonna go ahead and wake it up. Uh, as soon as it wakes up, it's going to launch itself as an access point if it can't get connection. Okay, so I just woke the board up and what you wanna do is where I configured it up here, where's that at? Oh, duh, right here. Okay, so once I set the timeout, I do an auto connect. So if it already had the Wi-Fi settings saved, it will automatically connect. Otherwise, it's gonna launch itself as its own access point called the pusher. Okay, so once it launches itself as the pusher, you go and connect to it. So you're gonna go and connect to that access point. I'll go ahead and do that now. And then if you open up Google Chrome or something like that and just go like google.com, it's, it's kind of like a hotel network. It'll automatically uh, re, uh, redirect you to this configuration page. And the IP address is 192.168.4.1. And then you can configure the Wi-Fi, which is pretty straightforward. You click this, it'll show you all the access points in the area. You click the one you want it to connect to, put the password in and let it go. Okay, so it took that. And then you can see here the Google Chrome notification for, through the push bullet extension. I got the back door sensor trigger. So door sensor triggered at 4.3 volts. Now if I do the same thing by a forced wake by pressing the reset button, let's see if I can do that real quick here. Okay, I press the button this time and it's probably just gonna go straight to sleep. Yep, it did and didn't give me the notification. That's because the battery voltage is too high. So I'm gonna lower the voltage at like 3.2 volts, wake it up again. Okay, there we go. So I had a little bit of a problem there, but you can see battery voltage running low, 3.3 volts. So I was trying to uh, trigger it there on the, the low battery voltage. Uh, but anyway, that is how that works, and now it's it's connected. Uh, but really what's, what's uh, interesting with this whole code here is how it handles that push bullet notification. So once it actually gets the connection, we do this little, we, well, we print out the Wi-Fi details. We also uh, convert that float uh, battery voltage into a character array so we can insert it into the message. And then we use this, uh, we, we, well, depending on what's going on. So if we are an external wake, you want the message to look like this back door sensor, door sensor triggered. Uh, if the battery's running low though, battery voltage running low, okay? Um, and then backdoor sensor with obviously the voltage there. And that's how Richard put this uh, function together. So I can insert that value right here. 
Okay, so uh, it's, uh, it's a very cool function. And then it passes that whole message down to the function down here. So when it's done with that though, by the way, it gets into the loop and the loop does nothing but toggle the done pin, forces it low or you know high and low. It's toggling it continuously so that it puts that LDO, turns the LDO off and kills power to the module. And now the reason I'm cycling that done pin is because just in case the pulse was long enough to keep, I'm gonna pull up the schematic again real quick, just in case the pulse here continued to apply VBAT here, I want the done pin to continually toggle just in case it's still high at VBAT here. So, you know, in case things are really fast, I want um, the done pin to override that eventually. Because if I just held that, that done pin high, uh, and held it high while this VBAT was there, it would never turn off. Okay, so anyway, uh, let's get into this function. I'm not gonna get into the details of it, but we see that we pass the message, the message title, the type, uh, and then you know we, we throw the, uh, well, we already or, uh, constructed that message uh, up there, but here basically we're creating that message into a, a character array to be used in the HTTP post down here and see and that's how it's all created there to uh, satisfy the the API when we send it out so uh, very cool and that's all that's really needed and it's bringing that access token in right here so you set it up basically just like that and you you get the data out to all of your devices via the push bullet service and we'll we'll talk about the same sort of thing we use pretty much the same code here to push mo uh, notifications or messages to Slack as well. So very cool stuff, and uh, that is pretty much all there is to it. So uh, again, this code, by the way, is a little rough. You may run into a few problems. The circuitry is maybe even a little rough. I'm continuing uh, some of my tests here. Uh, I've had the boards all running now for a couple weeks, maybe even a month or maybe a month or so, I think. But uh, everything's been working out just fine. But a few things I still need to work on, like what happens if it does lose Wi-Fi or it fails to connect. I don't have any error handling anywhere in this code. So that might be uh, uh, something to look into. But definitely check out. I've got some, this is, uh, th in this code, I've got a lot of things that, you know, I grabbed from uh, other people. So make sure you go and check out their stuff as well. I just want to give support back to them and uh, yeah, appreciate all the hard work they put into this. So check out uh, Steve-O here and of course uh, what Richard's putting out on his YouTube channel. So again, there you go. That is the introduction to the Pusher Board project. Thanks for watching.